Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Mon Man. We are playing Affinity once again, and this time we are running up against an Esper control deck. Um, this is our opener. We've got an Ornithopter, Springleaf Drum, Steel Overseer, Etch Champion, Blink Moth, Ink Moth, and a Dark Steel Citadel. Um, fairly decent hand. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really use the Springleaf Drum for anything on turn one, but we can potentially have a turn two Etch Champion or uh, an Overseer. Uh, I think we might be on the draw on this one. So we could draw into something nice as well. Draw another Springleaf Drum, which isn't the most exciting, but um, I'm just going to run out the Ink Moth. And then we can play the second Springleaf Drum off of the first, off an Ornithopter. And just play the Swamp. Passes the turn. Draw another Springleaf Drum, which is slightly overkill there. Click on the Go for the Steel Overseer. Um, Kind of expecting counter magic. Could have just played around it and attacked with uh, one of our Nexus. Either the Ink Moth or the Blink Moth, which might have been the better play, forcing him into doing something. Um, but I decided to just run it out. Using our mana efficiently, as we can play out another Springleaf Drum. Not that it's going to do a whole lot, but um, might as well have it out there. Very good if we can get a Cranial Plating or something else going. Try to Memnite, gonna play the play first just in case he wants to try and mana lake a Memnite. Seems unlikely though. Um so now we're gonna go on with the attacking of Ink Moth Nexus plan. Not really interested in running our Etch Champion into uh Counter Magic. I'm gonna pump it with the Blink Moth so we can deal two uh two damage rather than just the one, um which puts him on a five turn clock. Choice isn't the fastest, but it is a clock. Again, just passes the turn. And a Vault Scourge, which I'm going to run out. We can make mana off it, so there's no reason not to play it, really. So, I think it's Remands the Scourge. I'm going to attack for two with our Ink Moth again. So I'll just pass the turn. We can play the Scourge, but even that we're going down an Infect route, it didn't seem particularly important. Well, obviously the danger of going down the Infect route is that um, if he has a way to answer this Ink Moth Nexus, then we don't really have any other way to capitalize on the poison, so that's always a risk of going down the Infect route. Um, obviously a difficult decision to make, but um, is the faster clock at the moment anyway. I got the thought cast, my opponent is going to snapcast the remand. Which is fine, we're still gonna be able to thought cast find Dark Still Citadel. We'll be able to run out an overseer and attack with my ink moth. Not for two this time. We're going on five uh in fact. And we're possibly gonna be able to pump up the ink moth next turn with the overseer so definitely Punt Inquisitions takes our Etch Champion, drops Tasiga, and also plays a Tech Edge, which is uh, pretty unfortunate for us. Um, I knew he was running Tech Edge, I probably wouldn't have run out this false land. Um, obviously, that's one of the best ways to play around Tech Edge. We don't really need that many lands in play, so if we can avoid playing the false land, then that leaves us in a fairly good position in relation to that kind of card. So uh yeah, uh, might have been a better play not to play the the uh play the fourth land, but obviously I didn't know he was running tech edge. And the Ornithopter uh he's gonna use tech edge the Inkmoth Nexus. I'm just gonna activate my blink moth and then put plus one plus one counters and everything. I'm gonna do one damage this turn but hopefully we'll be doing a bit more doesn't find a removal spell for the Overseer. Removal for spell for the Overseer is what he finds though in the form of Slaughter Pact, um, which is a little unfortunate. But uh, we still got a reasonably powerful Air Force and uh, he's not attacking in at the moment. Drop the Opal. Let's attack for five in the air. Chaplain doesn't appear to have an 
and then I'm going to drop another Volt Scourge. I think there might have been an opportunity to play this Volt Scourge earlier and get a plus one plus one counter on it, which I might have missed. Um, I can't really remember, I wasn't looking out for it, but um, I think I might have missed the chance to do that, but um, I don't think it's hugely relevant to be honest. But Attack Suite Custom Age, it's down to 16. And he activated Tassiger and I gave him uh, Inquisition, given that our hand's empty, that's not really too devastating. Obviously he was looking to get that slot pack back, which would have been the ideal for him. So, attack with everyone except Mem Knight. Opponent passed the Vault Scourge with the plus one, plus one counter on it. Which is fine, uh, I'm going to search for an island. Um, again, maybe we shouldn't have got the island there, actually. Uh, it's not hugely relevant given that we can make mana and uh, that just turns on potentially yeah, the possibility of him using another tech edge. So there's an argument for not bothering to search up that island there, given that it doesn't do a great deal for us. Uh, we knock our opponent down to four. So in reasonably good position here. When Tassigas puts the uh, Geist of Saint Traft and Lingering Souls into the graveyard, uh, maybe into the graveyard. I'm gonna give him the Geist, given that I'm planning just to fly over, um, and I don't want him to make too many Lingering Souls tokens. This really did save him here, because uh, it makes my situation a lot more difficult with him having Lingering Souls. Find a Ravager, which I'm gonna run out, and with the Mem Knight as well. Also potentially we if we can uh, can kill our opponent here if we uh, sack everything a, a lot of stuff to the Ravager and put all the plus one plus one counters on one creature because he's not able to block all our flies. Um but the risk there is if he has a removal spell then we're just gonna be dead. So he blocks the Vault Scourge and blocks the Blink Moth Nexus and then lets the Ornithopter through. Um I decided not to go in on it, given that I think there's a reasonable good chance that he has some sort of removal. Um, and obviously that would just be a big blowout if I sacked a ton of artifacts just to try and get that. Um, but maybe it would have been worth it, I suppose. The problem is that his long-term game is pretty nice with the Tassica and everything, so maybe I feel like we've got rid of his flies now and we still end up with two flyers in the end of this, so I think that's the worst situation to be in, but maybe I should have sacked a few things and put all the plus one counters on the Ornithopter threatened lethal, or maybe just put them on the Vault Scourge so I gain a considerable amount of life and have a fairly sizable flyer either one could have been good but uh, yeah, I'm aware there was a potential to win there, but um end up not going for it given that he had mana up for potential removal shenanigans but it was only two mana so looking back on it maybe I should have should have gone it for it there and tried to pull the trigger. I don't use Tasker on his turn finds another lingering souls on the top which uh, is really unfortunate for us so we have to give him back lingering souls path or a uh, slot of pact I decided to give him back the Lingering Souls, given that he's only got three mana, I mean, uh, four mana up, so he can cast Lingering Souls, but he can't flash it back as well. I suppose in the long term that gives him more tokens, but um, I don't really want to give him back any of these cards, so uh, this seemed like the best thing to do at the time. And again, we've got two flyers to his... Uh, two flyers. Oh, we just have another land. He hadn't had his land drop, so he didn't have to make four flyers. So maybe Lingering Souls wasn't the best thing to give him back, but giving it a targeted removal spell seems pretty awful too, particularly as one of our outs is potentially just ravaging ravage, uh, up one creature. So things have taken a turn for the worse. Our opponent is on one though, so Galvanic Blast is definitely an out to uh, this situation. And we're not losing, but we're just not winning either, <laughs> which is. Of the unfortunate 
situation. Permanent uses surgical extraction on X champion, which would have been a potential out. Um, it's only one of the one of those in the deck though, so I'm not too devastated about that. As opposed to Geist that I uh, generously gave him off of Tassigaras activation. I draw Mox Opal, so I'm just going to eat the Mox Opal we've got and then run it out. Uh, not a hugely significant play, but I might as well. Uh, it's attacking with the Ravager here. Um, I figure I might as well make it big. He just has to block with the Tassigar, which I'm with. I'm going to try and make this Ravager as big as possible. But Punt has a Snapcaster. So we sack that and then we put the counters on this Ornithopter. So we've got 5 7 Ornithopter now. Sizable flyers potentially, so. We're still in it, but we need to be able to uh, keep attacking. So I've probably played. Sorin Solemn Visitor, which is very timely for him. As uh, I think otherwise we would have just started attacking with our guys and uh, he would have been fairly far behind in the end. We only need to do one damage and he would have had to do some pretty awkward chub blocking. I mean, we've got a 2 2 a 1 3 and a 5 7, so. Not a great situation for him. But um, yeah, Sorin uh, comes down just in time for our front. And uh, he's going to be able to gain a significant amount of life here. Actually, he just attacks with the Snapcasters, so I'm just going to eat one of them and uh, take three from the other one. Um, but that does put him back up to seven, which is significant. Also, he could have attacked with everything and gained a ridiculous amount of life. Um, which. Um, we could have probably had potentially had some outs too. I mean, if we drew cranial plating, we could probably do a fairly silly amount of damage back to him. And he probably wants to protect the Sauron as well, anyway. So um, it's probably the right thing to play that conservatively, I imagine. Um, we drop a Steel Overseer, which is good in the long term, but um, not really liking our chances from here. Point is also being able to Tasca multiple times. I gave him surgical extraction because I felt like figured that, that wasn't uh, particularly impactful. It does affect what I can draw, but it's not devastating for him to be extracting things out of our graveyard. Uh, the one thing I didn't pay attention to was that he can actually get lands. I think later he takes my nexus with a surgical extraction, which is kind of annoying because it does prevent me from uh, drawing a potential out to a situation. But that's the uh, slightly further ahead so opponent considers uh, continues to be quite conservative in his attacks from that I don't know that I would particularly bother seeing as I am actually still getting the better of those exchanges but um, that is the way my opponent chooses to play it draw a cranial plating but can't do a whole lot with it there's no profitable attacks really at the moment None that I can see anyway. Point Tassigas. Bring back a Inquisition because our hand is completely empty. Ghost Quarter, which is nine. That means we can't use this Blink Moth Nexus very effectively anymore. I've kind of lost track of what he's been getting with Tassiga, but he drops another Lingering Souls into the graveyard, which is bad news for us. I think I gave him back the surgical extraction, so he takes all the steel overseers out of my deck. I put the well, plus one plus one cat was out, but um, the overseer gets a path, which is annoying. And I put it also got the emblem, so he uh, traded his Sorin in for an emblem. Um, so we're just going to have to start sacking a creature a turn. It's fairly devastating. I start to go aggro with my Ornithopter, but not going to do me a whole lot of good really. Um, basically lost this one. Uh, <laughs> Why my commentary has gone a bit off to be honest. Um, yeah we're just not able to keep up with this really. Um, kind of a 
one could have won this match, and maybe we actually could have it's seen an opportunity to uh, have won this one, or could have played it differently to have uh, won this. I'm not entirely sure where, but if you see, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, this turns out kind of badly. Well, keep running it out because there is a potential we could find a win from somewhere, maybe, but um, it's not looking great. And he's just getting so much value off Tasker now, he can even like Tasker twice. A turn. I mean, I suppose if he accidentally milled himself, I suppose that would have been another out as well, but. Um, yeah, opponent goes in for the kill now. I think he uh, taps my creatures and then bounces, uh, and then passes the Ornithopter, and he's just able to attack in for lethal. So, uh, yeah. Did not go quite to plan. Um, we almost got there, but just not quite. And uh, I think we got punished for trying to go down the infect route, um, which may have been the mistake that cost me the game. I suppose if we uh, maybe pursued um, a damage the damage route rather than the infect route in the early game, maybe we would have been able to win. Because um, it did all come down to one point of life for our opponent. So yeah, maybe that was. The decision that cost me really, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> so uh, let's go on to game two. So we're going to get to be on the play at least this time. So this is our opener. Got a signal pest. Inkmoth Nexus, Dark Sea of Citadel, Link Moth Nexus, Cranial Plate Ink, Ravager, and Whip Flare, which I brought in from the sideboard. It may not be great against him, but it can clear out those Lingering Soul tokens, which seems useful. So we're just going to lead off with a Signal Pest. I mean, this hand is not entirely great, but um, getting the Cranial Plate Ink would be going would be good. Uh, we've got a nice bunch of Man Lands as well. So. I'm loath to mulligan it. And Inquisitions takes the Ravager. It's been unfortunate. Gonna run out the cranial plate, just past the turn here. Both Hallowed Fountain untapped, which implies he's got something going on. Run out Citadel so we can get an extra point of damage off our uh, cranial plating. And also go with the Ink Moth Nexus. And pass the Signal Pest. And I go fetch up the land. Again, I think maybe we shouldn't have fetched up the land there. Uh, I don't think it's useful enough to uh, risk being uh, tech edged. So here we're going on a sort of aggressive route with our uh, man lands. We go down the infect route again, just to risk my man lands the least. Shirt sure, somewhat pays off in the sense that he uh, had a zealous persecution, so we could have lost both our man lands there if we hadn't played that uh, quite right. Although I suppose he. Yeah, we could have lost both. Yeah, that ended up kind of paying off, but obviously losing the income off is pretty bad. Um, I should have equipped actually there as well. I, I think I just messed up, which is the reason why I didn't equip the cardinal plating. So yeah, I think that was just a mistake, but obviously didn't make a great deal of difference to answer that. So I'm place Geist. So I have the Whip Flare, which can take that out. Um, Obviously, I don't want to run him in, uh, allow him to play Lingering Souls and get the better of me, so I'm just going to leave it for now. I'll try and run out of Vaults so that eats the spell snare. Which is really unfortunate because we could have gained a good amount of life with, in combination with Cranial playing. We can still attack for 5 here. We certainly are winning the uh, race in that sense. 
but uh, our lack of creatures is a little bit annoying. So our opponent gets to stack for six here. And he's got the Vault of the Archangel, which could potentially allow him to gain six life next turn, which is certainly of concern to me. And just passes over the turn, I think. Yep. Draw another cranial plating, but we don't really have enough mana to get the best out of that. I'm going to whip flare to avoid him gaining six life next turn. But unfortunately, we get the uh, counter draw of cryptic. So it's going to be able to attack him for one, eight, and see what happens. So I've got attached against gaining life, which you can understand he uh certainly risk of getting blown out by just tapping out. Perhaps Tassiga onto the battlefield, which is very annoying, with enough mana to So he might be able to get a path or zealous back or potentially something else, depending on what he drops in to the graveyard. Um we draw an opal, which is fine. But uh, unfortunately, we've only got this Blink Moth to rely on. Looks like I attached the Cradle Plate. I equipped it for one. I'm not entirely sure why I went for the uh, double mana, black mana uh, attach route. But it turns out our opponent has Snapcaster to pass away the uh, Blink Moth Nexus. So that leaves us dead next turn. So, yeah, didn't go quite the way, to, to, uh, quite the way I would have planned. Um, first game was close, but. The second game, not so much. Um, I think maybe we got a bit unlucky on the draw and him being able to deal with the few creatures we actually uh, actually found was, uh, was a little unfortunate. Uh, Esper Control probably should be a good matchup, but uh, this one didn't go so well. And I had some other unfortunate matchups against sort of Esper and the Delvey Control matchups. Um, which I would have hoped to be winning, but I think it's not as quite as good of a matchup as as, as I would hope. So um, I think that's quite an interesting one. I don't know if there's some way of shoring up that matchup, but it certainly doesn't work out too well for us uh, so far anyway.